Hello, my name is Mikai Stevens, and I was uh, looking at this uh, question here uh, from Jerry from the Sharp Extent um, Discord channel. He was uh, trying. I was trying to create a, a new scriptable object for each a player profile created. Is that even possible? Uh, you could, but it will not be say, a store. And, and so the the first part of this question, I'm going to try to be this very quick. Um, is yes, you can create scriptable objects, um, not at runtime during the game, but uh, in the editor uh, and a lot of uh, various methods and things like that um, to get a really good, uh, really amazing understanding. Richard Fine has a, a Europe talk and a LA talk for Unite. Um, this is Unite uh, 2016 Europe, and I think it's Unite uh, LA. I think it's 2016 or 17. Um, dun dun dun. Uh, Unite 2016 uh, uh, LA. Uh, anyway, so then he's talking about a lot of this, um, uh, a lot of the scriptable objects here, um, you know, are very, you you know, you can, you, you, uh, you know, so the persistent is you have an asset file, asset bundles, you can create the assets uh, in the file memos. Um, the non-persistent, you can actually create the instance, there's no asset file. Um, and then it's so it can be destroyed. You can actually save this. So we have this sort of uh, demo scene here to sort of explain this. We have a very very simple scriptable object. It just has a the name of the the scriptable object or the name of the the, the thing we're trying to display. We init it through various methods to, to change the data, and then we have this uh, game booter that sort of loads. Uh, we have a text object, and then we have the actual um, scriptable asset here, and then we have this uh, path. The data path the data and other stuff is just for myself um, and we just let the the debug.log know various things we try to load the asset uh, and if we find it then we say we loaded the asset if we created the asset through the scriptural object manager it creates the asset it says created the asset and if it doesn't create the asset then we have the the um, you know we couldn't we couldn't create the asset for whatever reason so now we're down to the uh, just the plain old scriptable object create asset uh, create instance uh, which is the post built so it's, we called it the post built asset that means that um, it's in memory um, anyway so to showcase this demo it's uh, rather simple we just have this debug menu uh, stuff like this and a debug prefab um, or text prefab and then we have this um, get this UI text object so now it's just cre it created the asset so it went through um, and says um, right here um, and it says oh hey it couldn't it couldn't find the asset on the load so it just created the asset for us uh, and then it initiated it as a created asset and then we go in here uh, we come into our resources and down to game name it says hey um, I'm not sure why it's um, it's not storing the data as correctly. Oh wow, and it actually is saving the um, sweet. That's the next part of, part of this. Anyway, so this is kind of um, uh, so why why did it why was it able to create the asset in the thing? Um, um, and so that's because of the, the partly is because of the scriptural object manager. And that sort of gets to that the second part of this question: Can you create the scriptural objects? Uh, you know, is, a, is that even possible? And yes, that's totally possible to create assets, to, you know, do them from bundles, all sorts of, you know, we, we do this a lot. And you can even do it from code, uh, which I think is the, the it's, it's really awesome for me because I don't have to worry about creating the assets and I can just create the assets. Um, this function right here just loads the assets. It's, you know, pretty standard. You just, uh, this is all runnable. This is actually runnable in the, um, um, this scriptable object manager, um, a lot of these paths can be ignored, but it's just, it's a, a, a kind of a loader for this, uh, the scriptable object. And partly is because I'm trying to figure out where I want these assets to sit normally um, and, you know, where the, and what they're going to do. So you just do this resources load all, which is then you're kind of looking for the name of the asset because um, uh, I sort of have unique names for everyone. And then if you can't find it there, then it tries to do this asset load. Um, and then from there, it's like if it can't if you can't find it, then we run this create asset. And this is kind of where it sort of says, hey, here's that scriptable object instance again. We can actually maybe um, uh, eliminate this, um, and then this would um, run that second. Um, if this was, and this is sort of like it runs through there, checks all the data again, just like before, and then says, hey, we found the file, or um, and then we load the file. But if we haven't found the file, 
then we come down here and this is where it gets a little bit um, the second part of at runtime because the asset database is the only way you can create an asset at runtime uh, so this is all that required you know so this is all that is required to create the asset which is the why we're getting that asset uh, we can actually delete this um, delete this folder um, well actually here let me um, pull some data out here I'm gonna pull this up in here first uh, just in case but anyway so uh, we deleted the entire folder so now it should say um, something like oh weird oh um, yes sorry I've um, it's always the problem with demos um, I'm actually doing some really bad things with my serialization on the other object but okay so there we go so that should actually fix it now we'll have the post built uh, come on yeah I should uh, uh, here let me um, I think it's because I Anyways, let's hopefully not worry about that. It's uh, another mess <laughs> we'll talk about in a few seconds. But, um, oh. But the booter, let me look at one more thing. Oh, um. Uh, uh, usually this always returns back for me so sometimes if that's the problem it's probably what's uh, affecting this so this should have now have say post built asset uh, basically I'm trying to simulate the fact that that we're no longer in the editor oh oh I think I, I destroyed it yeah oh there we go there we go post build asset <laughs> yay let's pause it before it crashes uh, there's a problem in the background. That's why it's freaking out. But anyways, here you can see the post build asset. Um, it's actually not um, in the. It's not. Um, but the other thing about the post build asset, I th I think is interesting, is that we can actually see this asset right here, and then here's the post build asset. So it's creating it in memory, uh, and then if we unload this and then reload this, um, yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Um, game name. Yeah, so uh, part of the uh, the uh, scriptural object manager is creating it through the um, the type of T uh, right here. So it's just this is how we create the decide on names of a lot of objects. It's just type of the T uh, unless it's a you know, specific object. Normally all our objects are just you know uh, well that's the the type of the T and then sometimes we pass in a uh, also pass in a um, the name. So we have these two different ways to sort of access these assets. Um, for us anyway so that's sort of like uh, right here we've uh, because we've um, jury rigged this to stop this from creating the instance um, this is what creates the memory address right here and then which you can pass back uh, and then this one is what actually creates the um, um, uh, this is what creates the um, the uh, the physical object and you can only yes you can only run that in the editor so it does sort of prevent the runtime but it's to me, it's like um, it's it's really nice to be able to create assets on the fly and use them. Uh, the second part of this is um, well, that's not very useful. Is there anything else you can do? And uh, Richard Fine talks. He has a much better demonstrations of assets that are working perfectly for him because <laughs> he understands this a little bit better. But we're actually trying to create this other asset called a levels asset, uh, and this is a a data file that's sort of it's a scriptable object we're creating it through normally we create it through the um, asset menu um, we're not sure exactly where this is going to sit but it's going to be able to we're going to be able to create the goal is to be able to create these through the asset menu uh, we're to be able to load them through the JSON and it's like what JSON yeah you can easily uh, right here uh, he talks about this is just from the we, we create the instance of the asset just like we did before which you can do at the in the runtime and then create the static. Uh, this is where it's creating a static instance. Although this is where it's kind of bugged a little bit. Uh, for it should, um, it's not quite uh, working as it should be. Anyway, so um, he has a better working example. I'm trying to do something completely different where I'm trying to create and load the asset in 
and do various things like that and get it all working. Anyway, so you have this JSON utility. You just pass in the um, the text of the file and you um, store it into you know this. This is a, happens to be a script, a static of the scriptable object, but it could be anything. Um, and then we and then you also had to hide flags. This is hide flags are so when it just um, um, so jar garbage collection won't destroy it um, if you don't have any references. So you can sort of keep this around for a long time if you want to. And then you can um, um, you can save it to JSON as well. Just um, you write all you know write whatever the path you wanted to write to. You just say to JSON and you pass the scriptable object. And then you pass in true as in uh, pretty prints. Ah, yes. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we just have this various, um, this is just kind of like the on, this is kind of the problem, right? Some of the problems right here, it's, you know, I need to clarify exactly how to save and load this data. Um, and it's pretty simple. Um, the other, uh, the cool thing about this is it creates this, um, let's see if I can find it. Um, I guess not. It creates this, um, this this say uh, this is not obviously not setting up correctly but we also have this um we have this other um this is kind of the the, the, st the stand in for our scriptural object it's a we have this uh name of the game and then we have these two pieces of data uh this one is a non uh just a, a json uh, you know i call them json classes but a just a just a standard c sharp class this one is actually a scriptable object right here uh and i believe if we close this down um oh i think i deleted it mm, might have deleted it Let's see if I can find. Oh, yeah, I deleted it when I deleted the folder. Come on, I don't think this is going to run very well. Anyway, so so I was just going to show you this the um, the um, JSON data. Um, and uh, it's obviously not going to want to work. And so this video is getting a little bit long. Why is it not storing it as JSON? Oh, uh, because um, maybe? Yes, I think that's the problem. Here, let me see if I can get this to work again real quick. Sorry. Um, Uh, because the the normal scriptable objects don't have JSON data attached to them, so um, here let me um, delete. Oh no! Okay, yeah, I, I'm. Anyways, that's that's not uh, the the levels data is is probably a massive problem. Uh, anyways, you can see that it's just it's it's these are easily serializable. The level ranges is uh, the the list uh, object that's serializable from the the levels object that's causing me so much pain right now. Um, and it's, it works in Richard Fine's examples. It's not anything that I'm doing. Uh, and here's the level ranges right here. So. And right, the problem right now is just it's not creating the recreating the data. Uh, anyway, so that's a, a really good example of yeah, you can use the script to create instance if to create the memory, uh, and then you can see that uh, in the inspector when you store it in a you know in some sort of uh, mono like a, this is the game booter actually has this um, this viewable object here that you can look at, um, and then um, and then the. Uh, um, and you can also uh, uh, save it to JSON or uh, use static instances um, from the uh, Richard Fine talk. Richard Fine goes into so much more details about you know the the persistence, the the, the life structure, where you can do with a lot of these things. I don't understand the asset bundles, but I'm, I'm hoping one day I will, because then it might make it easier to do a lot more things. But anyway, so that's kind of where I'm going with this. I would say I have you know I need to fix out a. It's basically these. It's just the the, the the concern right now is where I'm trying to create uh, trying to create this sort of as a uh, 
where it's like it's a really robust where it's like it finds it if it can find it it creates it through the um, through the scriptural object manager uh, and then it also um, loads it from JSON so and that's the other thing too is like you can create these as um, script you can create those as scriptable objects through the right click menu which is probably not going to work because oh yeah here we go so you can do the right click here oh uh, yeah anyway so you can do the right click um, you know right click create um, you know create it you can load it from the JSON data if the data was actually active and correct uh, and you know a lot of things like that so it's really cool um, yes there is that 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 last sort of you know and it sort of depends on what people mean by runtime I assume that just means you you know um, and I'm trying to, you know, this is my third attempt at this. My first one was 45 minutes, second one was 30 minutes, and this one's like 15 minutes already. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's it's possible. And then, it's, you know, can you do it during the game? Um, and the, the the problem with that is that that one line of code, asset create asset, or asset database dot create asset, that's actually what creates the physical file. Um, so the physical file is not possible, but the JSON and the um, the runtime or the uh, the editor asset create is is very possible. And you can actually do it the run if you run the game in the editor, you can actually create all your databases and all your assets up front. You know, kind of and a lot of and that's sometimes I'm doing that a lot with my game is I'm creating a lot of things on the fly in the editor and then I ship and then you can ship all that stuff and it will fi I'll find those assets it transfers them over to the um, um, I think I have an example of this here one more second let me show you the um, the actual working example of this oh, nope sorry oh this is the uh, yes Haven 2.0 so here it just um, runs the exact same project uh, this is a, a the earlier build, so then it just says loads. So it says you know the, is null, which is where it starts. It creates the scriptural object manager. It loads the game name, and uh, um, this is where it's it's loading the asset, and then it found the asset, uh, and then it found the asset of the game name, and then it loads it as Hamlet 2.0, which um, you can sort. I think this is sort of. Um, and then you know, and then you should be able to create um, uh, JSON data as well. Um, yeah, so here's the. This might be an asset bundle here. Um, anyway, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, it seems to be working pretty awesome. Um, so, um, so you know, it's uh, it's just how you want to sort of you know get around some of the pro the problems with the runtime of the asset database create. So, anyways, thanks very much. You have a great day. You take care.